Fifth Quick Game, released on Netflix in September, is racing up its rank in lots of countries. The story starts with 456 participants who are desperate about money, being invited into a mysterious place to play games in order to win 45.6 billion Korean won. And these games are children's games. Some of these games are pretty common and obvious, like tug of war or bridge game. But some are Korean traditional children's games which you may not be familiar with. So, let's look at these traditional games, their rules, and their real names. The first game, Red Light, Green Light. The game goes like this. The tagger, or it, in the game stands several meters away from where all the other players start. The tagger starts by turning his back away from the players and says, 무궁화 꽃이 피었습니다. While the tagger is doing this, the goal for the other players is to run and reach the tagger. However, they can only move when the tagger is not looking. In other words, players can only move while the tagger is saying the sentence 무궁화 꽃이 피었습니다. Because the moment tagger finishes the sentence, he can look back and check the players. At this moment, if anyone moves, the moving player is out. In the series, all the sound effect and the situation make the sentence sound so creepy. But the actual meaning of the sentence is not at all creepy. It's not even red light, green light in translation. 무궁화 here is the name of a flower, the national flower of Korea. It looks like this. 꽃 means flower, and 피었습니다 means bloomed. The second game is Sugar Honeycomb. Sugar Honeycomb is the translation of 설탕 뽑기. 설탕 means sugar and 뽑기 means picking. But usually we just call it 뽑기 instead of 설탕 뽑기. The reason it's called 뽑기 is because if you pick out the shape without breaking it, you get one more for free. Sounds easy, right? But it's actually not that easy because this honeycomb is made of sugar and it's really fragile. Well, you can obviously guess which shape is the most difficult to pick out. The next game's tug of war, marbles, or bridge were pretty obvious to understand. So I'll skip these games. But in the episode for marbles, there were two Korean authentic cultural terms that were interesting to look at. As the marble game starts, participant number one and ki are partnered up. And participant number one mentions that he and ki are now <laughs> Like he says, Ganbu is pure Korean word that means my team, my friend, or my partner. To be honest, this word is barely used in modern times in Korea. But there is a fried chicken brand called Ganbu Chicken. And their website also had the definition of the word Ganbu. Well, more important than the definition of this word, this brand's chicken is actually really good, so you might want to try it when you come to Korea. Another term was 깍두기. In this episode where the woman was left out, but turns out that she was exempt from the game. In English translation, she says that she was the weakest link. In Korean, she says 깍두기. 깍두기. 깍두기 is a type of kimchi. For those who do not know what kimchi is, kimchi is traditional Korean food, 
It is spiced vegetable, usually cabbage. There are lots of types of kimchi though. Those made of cabbage, made of radish, made of spring onions, also spicy ones and not spicy ones. Gakdugi out of those is the spicy one made of radish cut into cubicle shapes specifically. If you have a Korean supermarket in your area, you might be able to find these there. Okay, back to the game. In children's games, Gakdugi refer to people who were exempted of any penalties. Usually, it referred to little siblings that kids brought along to the games. In old days in Korea, it was common that all kids in the village or area played games together. So kids would bring their little siblings along. And sometimes there would be little siblings who were too young to understand the rules enough or prominently too weak compared to others. So these little kids used to get the kakdugi role. So the kakdugis are in the game, but they don't get the penalty. Why were they called kakdugi? The origin comes from kimchi again. Kakdugi kimchi used to be made of leftover radish. When you cut radishes, there are always the leftover part at the end. And in old days, people used to make kakdugi out of these leftover parts. So in the children's games, these left out kids, just like the leftover radish, were exempted from penalty. The English translation of kakdugi in the Squid Game series was weakest link. However, when we were young, kakdugi was rather like the Joker card. It was rather a part of warm culture, a way to include everyone regardless of their age or abilities. Then there's the last game, the squid game. The name is squid game because it is played on ground by drawing shapes that look like a squid. In this game, there are two teams, offense team and defense team. The goal for the offense team is to start from the upper head circle, follow the lines to the bottom circle, and then through the body back up to the head circle. In doing so, they can only stand on one foot. But if they succeed to pass across the body from left to right, then from then on, they can stand on both feet. So the usual ideal path that a fence team would follow would be like this. The goal of the defense team, on the other hand, is to block the offense team from getting back to the head circle. The defense team must stay inside the squid. So their role is to block and push out the offense team when the offense team tries to cross body. That is why, like the movie said, it is the fiercest children's game played. 